when you look at who's um, running the country at the moment, it, it isn't dissimilar. The Houses of Commons aren't dissimilar. The bullying, the toxicity uh, uh, and the small mindedness isn't dissimilar to uh, what you're describing at Oxford University. It seems that uh, a lot of the political class have just transposed what happened at uni into the House of Commons. Yeah, I mean, I think that's to do with hierarchies. You know, we talk about going up to Oxford um, and it, even in the very language is embedded that sense of, of hierarchy. So these small, petty slights, they go a very long way. You know, and if, if I broke one of the rules, I, I, I'd say, well, what's going to happen next? And we shall write to you. You know, and, <laughs> you know, and, and it was quite quite funny, you know, but but um, they mean it, they mean it. And, and I think there is an endemic sort of bullying culture. It, it is very masculine. I mean, it, it harkens back to the 13th century when Oxford was all men. And this didn't change until the 1930s, don't forget. So they're not used to seeing a woman in any kind of position of, of status or power. And there is an obsession with status and power, which I find really boring. You know, it doesn't really interest me. I think for me, because I came, you know, I've got my own career as a, as, as a writer. I had my family. I've got a strong sense of self I wasn't um, bowed down or cowed by those traditions um, or by the rules I don't think I, I, I didn't doff my cap being a best-selling writer uh, probably didn't help you did it because uh, these uh, professors and academics uh, write for an audience of about five uh, you've sold millions of books uh, that must be a little irksome for the uh, competitive insecure male but I think absolutely um, the opposite. I think in their mind, they just think, how horribly vulgar. She sells books. She sells books. She makes money out of books.